Hello everyone, and welcome to this slightly different, just interesting video on the channel. It's unusual in that it's kind of a vlog, a vlog, a video log of things that have happened in my life recently. As you may or may not be able to tell from the sound of my voice, I have recently had a, an illness. In fact, I'm, I'm still in it. That's a lie to say I've recently had it. I've recently acquired it, but I'm actually still working my way through it, and I'm now feeling well enough to be able to sit down <laughs> and look at a camera and talk to you for a few minutes. This will be just a stream of consciousness video. Unusual for me. Normally I like to do a lot of research into my videos, but today is about my experience catching COVID in 2022. And I'm not going to lie, it's been awful and it's still being awful, but it's also been surprising and that's why I wanted to make this video. So what I'll do is I'll tell you how it all began and what I've experienced and the symptoms I've had and maybe they compare with the ones that you may have yourself experienced and if you have had COVID, I'm really sorry for you, or that people you know who've had COVID may have experienced, or they may be symptoms that no one else has had, because according to my doctor, perhaps that is the case. So on the 28th of June, at about 6am in the morning, I woke up with the most excruciating pain I have ever experienced. Like someone had taken two spikes and driven them into the back of my skull behind my ears, on both sides of my head. And I was writhing in pain, convulsing, as my wife told me later. I hadn't realised at the time quite what I was doing. All I remember is the pain. And it only lasted about 10 seconds, but it took a long time to fade. It took a few hours for that pain to fade. But it was... Hard to tell exactly because as well as this pain, um, I also had a brain on fire. I've never felt so combusted inside my own head as I did that day and the day afterwards. It was horrible. It was just constant turmoil inside my head. Like my brain was steel wool on fire. It was full, it was stuffy, it was constant pain. And in addition to that, my sinuses were blocked and painful, my nose was blocked and painful, my throat was blocked and painful, and my ears were blocked and painful. And I'm a man who has asthma and hay fever, and I thought, this, this could be a cold. So luckily we had some LFTs and some lateral flow tests. So I took a test, and this is the result. And you can't quite tell, but those lines were much stronger on the day. It was like the most positive you could possibly be in terms of test result for COVID. It was very much, you've got COVID. Now, this isn't the first lateral flow test I've taken. I've taken many over the last couple of years, and they've always been negative. And I have been blessed that so far, up to this point, since the beginning of the pandemic in, well, you might say December 2019, or you might say March 2020 in the UK, which is when our first lockdown occurred, since that time, I have been very diligent, very careful. I've been lucky enough that I can work from home. I've been able to avoid public transport as much as possible. I wore a mask everywhere I went when I was out in public. I observed social distancing. I avoided going into shops unless I really had to. Anyway, this test result was not a shock, but an unpleasant surprise, to be sure. After nearly two and a half years of avoiding catching COVID, I was beginning to get optimistic that I might be one of the few that would get away with it. Alas, it was not meant to be, and on that first day, that 28th of June, by the way, happy birthday, Turkey, I was just flattened. I was completely bowled over. I could stand up to take my LFT, and then after that, all I could do was lie down. I was in bed, I dragged myself to the sofa, but between those two locations, I barely went anywhere. I had to feed myself, I had to get water, I needed to drink, but beyond that, I could do nothing. It was a miserable day. I've been ill before. In fact, I've been so ill I couldn't eat before, but it wasn't as bad as this. I couldn't concentrate. My head, like I said, was like a fireball. My body was freezing cold and boiling hot at the same time. And my stomach was incredibly delicate. It seemed that every drink I had, and I was only drinking water, mind you, just passed straight through me. And this was a surprise. This was something I didn't realize happened. And when I spoke to the doctor on the phone, they said, you need to keep hydrated, you need to keep drinking water because your body won't be accepting it. And I thought, what? Now here we get into the potential territory of too much information, but the delicate stomach is relevant because the day before, on the 27th of June, I had bad diarrhea all day. 
and it surprised me. I thought, where's this come from? I don't think I've eaten anything odd. I am a bit sensitive to spices, but again, I hadn't eaten anything odd in the previous weekend, so this seemingly came out of nowhere. Now, in the UK, the NHS website lists some major symptoms of COVID which you should look out for. It's a somewhat hilarious list that like a lot of other things, when you look up cancer symptoms, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got cancer because I've got a headache. It's one of those things where anything basically could be COVID, but I'm just getting ahead of myself. Let's read them out. A high temperature or shivering chills. Oh boy, have I been experiencing that. A new continuous cough. I've had that. A loss or change to your sense of smell or taste. Well, I haven't lost my sense of smell or taste, but my wife and I are vegetarian, and we, even before we were vegetarian, we hate fish, but for some reason something smells like fish. Shortness of breath, I've had that. Feeling tired or exhausted, yes, yes. An aching body, my arms just started aching, just, just aching, for no reason. A headache, that doesn't do justice. A sore throat, you can say that again. A blocked or runny nose. Yes, I forgot to mention, the day after my nose was really blocked, it was runny all day. Yeah, I've had both of that. Loss of appetite. Yep, I've had that. Diarrhea. Little did I know at the time that it was the harbinger of COVID. But the doctors weren't surprised at all. And I say doctors because I made a lot of phone calls. As well as lying in bed, pitying myself, failing to sleep, I did ring the doctors. Now, in England, we have the National Health Service, and the National Health Service has a number of emergency helplines. You can dial 111. Not exactly medical advice, and not exactly a diagnosis, because the people you speak to aren't actually medical professionals, so they're not allowed to give you advice or a diagnosis. But what they can do is assess your symptoms to give you the best option for you. And they'll tell you probably to call your GP, but they might recognize that something is so severe is happening that they'll tell you to call an ambulance, or they might call an ambulance on your behalf. Or in my case, they'll pass you on to a clinician, somebody who again wasn't a fully qualified medical professional, therefore could not give me full medical advice, but could give me a more informed opinion than the person who answered the phone in the first place. So they passed me on to this person, that person passed me on to an actual doctor, and the doctor referred me to my GP. I also rang 119, which is the COVID-19 helpline in the UK. Now, I rang it because when I first called 111, which is just the National Health Service helpline, it told me to call 119 if I thought I had COVID, so I did. And when I called them, they said, what language do you speak? And I, slightly confused, said, English. And they said, oh, you've come to the foreign language helpline. Anyway, the other person on the line, lovely young woman, incredibly helpful, incredibly kind, incredibly sympathetic, wasn't able to help me at all. And she told me to ring 111 again. So back I went to 111. I'm now on phone call number four, I think, at this point in the day. And eventually I'd made about five or six. The final call was my GP. And he said, sounds like you just got a bad case of COVID. But what he was worried, though, was the fact that I've been experiencing chest pains all day. And chest pains are unusual for COVID. And in conjunction with this incredibly excruciatingly painful stabbing sensation I had in the back of my head when I woke up in the morning, he said, that sounds bad. Perhaps it's an aneurysm. Now, he did point out that it would be unusual for a man of my age, who's relatively young, to have an aneurysm. Nonetheless, there is a history of heart problems in my family, so it's possible that the chest pains I was experiencing and the stabbing pain in the back of my head was an aneurysm, which would be a, a burst blood vessel, essentially. So he sent me to A&E. I had to call a taxi, which is fine, don't mind calling a taxi, and the taxi said it would be there in about 15 minutes. One hour later, the taxi still hadn't arrived, so I called the taxi rank again, and I said, hey, where's my taxi? And he said, you've been collected, you've been dropped off in A&E, it's in my records. And I said, well, I haven't been dropped off in A&E. Took a little bit longer, but eventually I got to A&E. Now, at A&E, they were lovely people, they were great, but I was there for 10 hours, and the waiting time when I arrived was five hours. So, as you can imagine, it got quite stressful when the fifth hour had passed and I was still there. And by the tenth hour, I was very, very, very tired and very ill because I didn't want to fall asleep in case they called me up. Now, I don't know how A&E works in other places, but where I am, A&E is a big room full of seats. People walk in, they get registered at the reception, and then they sit down and they wait to be called. 
a call by a member of staff who comes out and yells their name. Some of those members of staff have quite heavy accents because they're from a region of the UK that has a heavy accent or they're not from the UK. And some of the names, because we're a multicultural society, are not necessarily English. So sometimes those names have to be yelled four or five times before somebody responds because you've got the perfect mixture of people who can't say the name with people who can't hear the name being said and everyone's wearing masks and everyone is ill. The longer the short of it is that I didn't want to fall asleep at a time in my life when I've never felt more ill. And I arrived at 7pm, I left at 5am, and throughout the whole period, I didn't sleep, despite desperately needing to lie down and rest. Now, I'm not blaming the A&E for this. The hospital did what they could, but they had one doctor on staff overnight, and that's just not good enough for the 40-odd people who were in there some of whom were in almost certainly worse condition than I was. Anyway, I had an ECG, which is an echocardiogram, and I had a blood test, and I had a consultation with the doctor, and he said that everything was fine. I hadn't probably had an aneurysm. There certainly wasn't a trace of a heart attack, so chances are that pain in my head was just a one-off. And I said, well, should I worry? And he said, only if it happens again. Here in the UK, we also have an NHS test and trace program, which has been heavily criticised throughout the pandemic period by those who recognise that it is not actually provided by the NHS, it's provided by private companies with the label of the NHS slapped on it, and also costs at least £34 billion, it may have been £37 billion, and no one's entirely sure where all that money went. Anyway, that's besides the point. Part of that NHS test and trace program is an app that you can download onto your phone, and I downloaded it at the beginning of the pandemic like a good citizen should. And the way it works is that it uses Bluetooth, if you activate the Bluetooth on the app, to communicate with the phones of everybody around you. And the idea is that the app will keep track of who you mingle with for any extended period of time. I think 15 minutes is the minimum amount of time that it registers with the phones around you. And then if any of them get COVID, they tell the app and then the app will notify you. Now, the day after I came out of A&E, I got a notification on the NHS COVID-19 app to tell me that, indeed, I had been in contact with someone who had tested positive for COVID-19. Shock horror. And I had been in contact with them on the 25th of June, which was the previous Saturday. But the notification did remind me that I hadn't updated my test result onto the NHS app, and therefore... I wasn't letting other people who I'd been in contact with know through the app that I had tested positive for COVID-19. So I went into the app. But when you click on the option to register a test result, it comes up with this and it asks you for a code. Now, the code is eight characters long and you can only get it by logging into the NHS website with your account, which incidentally, I have one set up, so that wasn't a problem, to register your test result with them. But you can only register a test result with them by scanning the QR code on your LFT. Now, I've done this several times throughout the pandemic because I've done several tests and they've always had this QR code or the alphanumerical code underneath the QR code in case your camera doesn't pick up the QR code for whatever reason. This is what it should look like. This is what mine looked like, my positive test result. As you can see, there is no QR code and there isn't even a code on it, alphanumerical. There's nothing on there. So I couldn't register my test result with the NHS website and obtain the eight-digit code that I needed to put into the NHS COVID-19 app to let people know that I had tested positive. Not that it matters even if you do have a QR code on your LFT, because if you try to register it online, then you just get an error message saying the code is wrong. See the flaw in the system here? I was, frankly, disappointed that I would finally get COVID, finally have a positive test result, and not be able to register it. Having registered multiple negative test results in the last couple of years. Anyway... Currently, I'm better than I was before. Right now, I'm using all my energy to talk to you, and I hope this sounds normal. I hope that I sound okay to you. I would hate for you to have to endure listening to me when I sound awful. But to be honest, it's taking a lot of energy out of me. And I'm pretty convinced that once I've finished recording this one take wonder, I'm going to go to bed and collapse. But here's the rub. I have caught COVID at a time when COVID cases are on the rise in the UK. The latest figures suggest that 2.3 million people have tested positive this week, which is a 30% increase on the last week's tests. And that's a lot. Luckily, it's Omicron, which is less dangerous than previous variants. And I do feel lucky in that regard, because right now I feel awful, and I've had an awful week, and I've had awful symptoms. But I've also had three vaccines, and I'm catching a weaker variant two and a half years after the strongest, most deadly variant hit the nation. I can only begin to imagine how people felt, how they suffered when they caught COVID. 
before we had a vaccine in the early days when the virus was at its most fatal. I just can't begin to comprehend what that felt like. So to anybody listening to this, anybody watching this, I really, really do hope that all of you continue to remain safe and unaffected, uninfected by COVID for, a, for, for the rest of your lives, frankly. We're coming out of it. That's the good news. The pandemic will eventually cease to be a pandemic and we'll just have to live with COVID in the same way that we live with flu every winter. But right now, it's still a pandemic. People need to be careful. In the UK, we've dropped all restrictions, as the NHS COVID-19 app happily reminds you when you open it. If there's another round of vaccine boosters, I will definitely be queuing up to get my fourth. So thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. This is an unusual experiment. I just felt like sharing my experience with COVID. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative because like I said, we're not out of the woods yet. So all of you, please do be careful, stay safe.